This is Saving the Game, a Christian podcast about tabletop role-playing and collaborative storytelling. Recorded Monday, January 14th of 2019, it's bonus episode 18. In this episode, an introduction to objectives and key results, why the system works well, and how we're using OKRs to improve the podcast this year. Plus, our City on the Hill gaming appearance, Grant's new Eberron game, office decorating, and more. Welcome to Saving the Game. I'm Grant. I'm Peter. And I'm Jenny. And this is a bonus episode to start off the new year. Sort of a return, if you will, to our old New Year's resolutions episodes that we used to do, but with a different approach. Uh, one that I hope will be actually edifying and useful for our listeners. It's still going to be a bonus episode because we're not really talking about gaming material and it's still kind of about the podcast but uh, I wanted to put a little more out there than this is what we're hoping to do this year, you know? Yeah, have a look behind our operational curtain, folks. <laughs> right. And and I, I picked up a cool book that I think I've talked about previously on the show, and um, we're going to kind of get into objectives and key results and how that system works, which is useful not just for businesses, but for small organizations and families and a few other things. So we'll get to that. First, though, two quick new bits of news and notes. Uh, most importantly, two days from when we are recording this, we're recording our first City on a Hill gaming episode. Yep. And this will be the second time all three of us have been on an actual play together, and that was also a City on a Hill bonus episode. Yes, yeah. so, <laughs> a little side quest thing. Yeah. yeah, it was not terribly long. 15 minutes or something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very short, like that. yeah. I should break Koga Tool back out. I, I actually liked that character. Mm -hmm. I really liked Desilov, too, but... I decided to make a new one for some reason. I could not wrap my head around playing a barbarian. I'm very excited to going back to so something arcane and and a Your little magic. ways. My wizardy <laughs> ways. No, I don't Crimson, blame you. Crimson born ways, because we made <laughs> oh, up a well. class. Hey, there I'm you go. playing a cleric again. I'm sure you're all shocked. <laughs> I, I'm branching out for me and playing a fighter. You've wanted to play a fighter for a while, though, because I, I fighters in 5e are awesome mm -hmm. they are fun but i normally shy away from that i i want to either be the guy who's doing lots of dps because mechanically increasing numbers is fun or i'm happy to play the controller sort of character who wins a fight without really you know getting into combat like the fighter tanked really well and the rogue did all the damage but it was my grease spell that really set us up to win right yeah mm -hmm. And we've talked about that before. It's a it's oh, a yeah. it's an underappreciated play style, I think, and it can be really effective when done well. Yeah, absolutely. But I because this is a kind of a, a relatively bright fantasy world, uh, I kind of wanted to do something a little different. And because it's an AP, I wanted to do something a little simple and recognizable. So I'm playing a pretty basic knight character. I'm going to add to his characterization, but. In terms of like a quick, what's your character? Uh, he's a chivalric knight. Okay, got it. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. And I, I'm playing kind of your, I don't want to say stereotypical because I think Bertrand is going to wind up being significantly nicer than your average dwarven cleric. They tend to be kind of cranky and grudgy and stuff, but it's a dwarf cleric at the end of the day. It's a dwarf forge cleric, for goodness sakes. It's all about making and fixing things and... I'm kind of personality wise, I'm thinking probably the parts that I liked the best out of uh, Desilov, which was my previous character for those guest episodes on City on a Hill and then Lambert, because I really enjoyed playing him and I wasn't quite done when we finished with Grant's game. Yeah, fair. I don't think a character that's the average of those two is going to be at all inappropriate in what could be described as an aggressively wholesome actual play. So, yeah. And then there's me playing emo goth boy. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Um, I'm yeah. I'm gonna be playing like super sober sides, sort of like like very. He, he's gonna be a grim dude. I'm totally excited about that. That's gonna be a lot of fun. I don't know if I can play a grim person. <laughs> I'm not used to it. I'm used to playing like super outgoing, doesn't know when to shut up, happy go lucky, jokey, punny kind of people. Okay, so play that but somebody who thinks they need to be a goth? No, I can't. He's going to be like, I can't. The, 
the teenager who's fallen in with like the goth crowd, but isn't like doesn't have the personality. Oh, for he's it. not a teen. I'm essentially playing a Renaissance painting of a mourning funeral person. Like, like I literally took inspiration from a painting of Our Lady of Sorrows, the Virgin Mary. <laughs> like, okay, all right. Sad, sad character. No, this works out fun. well then. Yes, it will be fun. I'm excited to see how. Oh, things Bertrand play out. is going to yeah. latch onto you like a barnacle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh trather is going to uh blithely tell you to cheer up and ignore any harm his words may do because he's not exactly perceptive or uh clever mm. persuasive perhaps but not clever mm. <laughs> anyway we're going to get ryan felton on at some point to talk about actual plays and about the game that he's running and all that but schedules are a thing so we'll figure out exactly when we get that uh, yeah. but it's going to happen soon tm Stay yeah, tuned. and if you haven't listened to City on a Hill already and you're not quite clear as to why we're kind of excited to be doing this, go listen to just a couple of episodes and you will understand. Absolutely. Ryan has this really nice kind of easygoing, gentle humor, laid back kind of GMing style that's just perfect yeah. for what we're going to be trying to do with that actual play. So yeah, I'm I'm quite excited actually to be getting some more time in with him. Yeah. The other thing that's happening is we just did session zero of the Eberron game that I'm going to be running, and hopefully next Saturday will be session one. So I'm excited about that. I think we had a pretty good session zero. We had some interruptions, which were unfortunate, but I'm not sure there was a whole lot left to talk about. We kind of introduced no, yeah. characters to each other, set up the group of private investigators, and kind of what everybody's relationship is, and how they got into the business, and why they're all working together. And then we figured out where in the city of Sharn the business is and who the clientele is, and we're going to run from there. Yep. And I oh think boy. that's going to, yeah, I think that's going to be fun. We're we're taking a little bit of um, a different tack with how we're going to schedule stuff in our gaming group because we, we went from one game up to two games because we could do Saturday and Sunday for a while, and then a whole bunch of life stuff happened and we're back down to one available gaming day out of the week. And I think we're going to start doing like story arcs, alternating that way instead of individual sessions, just so we can maintain some momentum. Also, for various and sundry life related reasons, I kind of need to take a break from GMing for a while. So it's good that Grant is able to step up and GM for a bit. So Yeah, and I'm definitely not having terrible anxiety about the whole thing. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> I mean, it'll be fine. The, the last um, two campaigns that you ran i know you wrapped them both up early but like the actual session to session experience of those was some of the most fun i've ever had at the gaming table so however much that reassurance great, is worth great. and i hope yeah, it's right, a lot raise the bar here peter thanks <laughs> i was just gonna say like peter peter we know you mean well but that's just like cool so the bar is like like the normal bar would be you know a pull-up bar that you put in the doorway. All right, This guys, one's on the roof this, this of the is, house. This is basically <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Grant does a very good job of facilitating the kind of play style that our group enjoys. Yes. I, I think we basically can't help but have fun. So All I, right, fine. I'm going to hold you to that. If you don't make it fun, I'll make it fun. Good. Watch me. <laughs> I insist you both have fun despite me. All right? <laughs> I mean, the dynamic that Jenny and I have between our PCs is probably going to generate a fair amount of fun anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I'm actually very excited. I mean, jokes aside, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm yeah. anxious, but I am very excited because the characters are fun, a little bit crazy, a little bit out there. Already uh, interlinked and surprisingly deep for session zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I've already had to threaten to turn the uh, hex color code name chart into a random table. So <laughs> I'm going to drop that in there without context and just I mean, also on. the sentence, I don't care that we're fighting and have a coconut phone. I demand to be treated like royalty was uttered during session zero, too. So. In fairness, I think they were quoting Gilligan's Island. Or they absolutely were. They were referring yeah. to Gilligan's Island, but not quoting it. All right. Fair enough. Anyway, we have a, another topic to get to, and in the interest of staying on topic and meeting our objectives, haha, -ha, hey. let's get to that. You will be hearing a lot more about our Eberron game because one of the reasons I'm running the game is to generate content for this show, and I'll be talking about that in a second. So let's talk about objectives and key results, shall we? Sure. Yeah. Okay. 
We are implementing behind the scenes here at Saving the Game a uh, objectives and key results system, which is kind of a business system designed to organize our business objectives, or in this case, our objectives as a, an organization, however loose and uh, unofficial we are. And we're creating key results that measure how we're meeting those objectives. The authoritative book on the OKR system, Objectives and Key Results, is Measure What Matters by John Doerr. John Doerr is a venture capitalist. He's one of the guys who initially invested in Google. He worked with Intel under Andy Grove. He is a big name in the tech and venture capital industry, very big in Silicon Valley. And his book is one of the most readable business books I've ever come across, which is a big plus. Yeah, it was kind I've of interesting. When you first got assigned this at work, it was like, oh, I got to read a business book. And then it was like, you know, this actually isn't bad. And then a little while later is, guys, we have to use this system. Yeah. <laughs> that never happened. So I was pretty intrigued. Yeah. And we're implementing it at my own company and we're implementing it at Saving the Game. So it's kind of cool because I get to do this in two different ways and see how both compare and contrast. So that works out. Uh, like I said, the system originated in Intel under Andy Grove. Uh, Andy Grove is one of the big three at Intel. Fascinating guy. Apparently one of the best business management people and teachers and theorists of the late 20th century. Really interesting guy. But the, the OKR system, because it started at Intel, all of the smart people who le eventually left Intel to start their own companies or invest in companies – took that to other companies in Silicon Valley. So this system's been used by Google and Remind and Nuna and Zendesk and MyFitnessPal and Intuit and the Gates Foundation and uh, Adobe and Bono's One Campaign and a bunch of other companies. And it's very successful in that. Uh, John Doerr actually made the OKR system a requirement for the round of venture capital funding he delivered to Google as they had just started to kind of grow and become a company that wasn't just working in a garage. And uh, that seems to have worked out okay. Yeah, they seem to be doing all right. And Google's still using the OKR system. This works really well. So let's let's talk about the basic structure of this. There's a key phrase I want to have you all keep in mind as we talk about objectives and key results or OKRs. I'm going to be talking about this as OKRs pretty often. OK, this sentence, we will achieve this objective as measured by these key results. That's the core structure of an OKR. Uh, this is John Doerr's first OKR at Intel. He's got this in the book and he's got this up on his website. So it's not like I'm sharing out of turn from the book. Uh, this is from Operation Crush when Intel pivoted over the course of two months and destroyed Motorola's attempt to move into part of the industry that Intel was in. So here's the objective. Demonstrate the 8080s. That was a particular Intel chipset. The 8080s superior performance as compared to the Motorola 68000. Key results as measured by deliver five benchmarks, develop a demo, develop sales training materials for the field force, and call on three customers to prove the material works. So let's break that down. Objectives. What are we trying to achieve? An objective is a significant, concrete, action-oriented, and inspirational goal. Done right, they prevent vagueness in your goals. It's not, well, we want to do better. We want to grow sales. You're setting something specific, but you're not necessarily tying it to specific metrics, or at least not beyond the broadest possible sense, like double our sales could potentially be an objective, but increase sales by $300,000 maybe a little too specific. These are inspirational and aspirational. Now, objectives specifically and explicitly surface your primary goals. What are we trying to do as a company or as a team? Or what am I trying to do this quarter? And these are usually done quarterly. I'll get to that in a second. These should not be too numerous because objectives are not a to-do list and key results aren't either. We'll talk about that as well. But you're not going in saying, my objective is to solve the customer support ticket I have open. That That's something that is just part of your job. And maybe solving a certain number of tickets is a metric by which you measure how well your support team is doing or your particular support performance is doing, but it's not clean my desk, right? right. <laughs> These are not tasks. These are 
high-level goals for you or your team or your department or your organization. You don't want too many of these also because if you're heading in too many directions at once, you're not going to get anywhere. You want to be kind of focused on a couple of objectives that different teams can meet to working together or that the company in a, the direction the company needs to move in this time frame. And these are also hierarchical. The company leadership meets, creates company objectives. Well, teams then meet and create objectives that pursue those company objectives based off what that team does. And then team members create objectives to pursue team objectives. So for example, you know, I am the support manager at my company. I handle the technical support for the software we make. Well, we have company objectives based around sales and customer relationships and things like that. I then create objectives for the support team in conjunction with the, the other team members because it's, you know, we're a small enough team that I'm not having to do top down stuff. I can meet with my whole team and talk about it and say, all right, guys, what can we do? What do we need to do? You know, that sort of thing. We come up with those objectives and not all of them necessarily feed into what the company is doing. Some of it is we know we need to do this to improve internally, but most of them do feed into that. And then our team members, including myself, create objectives to pursue our team objectives, but they don't have to be hierarchical. Because we can also, you know, help feed into other teams' objectives. We can go straight up into a company one because objectives are visible throughout the whole company. I get to see what the CEO's objectives are. He gets to see what mine are. It's all laid out for everyone. Uh, at Intel, they used to print them out and put them on cubicle or office walls so that when you walked by right next to the nameplate, you saw what that person's goals were this quarter. You know, we have a, a software solution that we're using here at Saving the Game and that we use at, uh, at my job. That does the same thing. We get to see specifically what we're all working on, and we all get to contribute to each other's goals. So those are objectives. Now, these are measured by key results, and that as measured by phrase is really important because these are the benchmarks and monitoring statistics for how the objective is achieved. These are specific. These are time-bound. They're aggressive but realistic. You want these – you want to reach, right? You, you want to try and set aggressive goals but not stupid goals. Now, most importantly, these are measurable and verifiable. These are things you can very specifically say at the end of the quarter, this was met, this was not met, here's the metric by which I know I met these. Now, again, these are not a to-do list or a task list. These are metrics. It's on me as the person working on these objectives you know, that are measured by these key results to accomplish tasks that can be measured by those key results and work towards that objective. We're going to give some examples in a bit. Now, typically you have three to five key results for each objective. Typically you have three to five objectives for each team or the, the company or each person, whatever. Uh, for key results, sometimes you might just have two. If it's one, you, you need to look carefully at it. What exactly are you measuring? Is this actually an objective, right? If it's just measured by one key result, maybe you're actually just talking about a key result that is part of a larger objective. But you can have more key results, although you don't want to get beyond, I would say, probably six or seven. Now, the general time frame for objectives is a quarter, three months. Longer term objectives do work well too, up to a year, longer than that, and you start getting too vague. Uh, shorter term objectives can also work for teams that are trying to meet short specific goals. Uh, sprints in software development are very common where you have a two-week push to get a particular thing done and then a two-week push to get another thing done, two-week push to get another thing done. It's entirely possible to create, you know, monthly or even two week objectives. That's, that works fine. But generally, we're talking about quarterly OKRs. The system can also be expanded with weekly plans and problems, weekly job satisfaction ratings, etc. But that's mostly outside the scope of this discussion that we're using right now. There are systems that add on to this because ultimately, People want to see what are you doing to achieve these objectives, and they, these kind of get into task management, but we're not talking about task management right now. Anything else before we move on, guys? Not really. Nope. <laughs> okay. I know, I've been talking a lot. I want to make sure you're, that- You're kind of the expert on this, so you, are, yeah. you brought this to us, so I'm perfectly happy to let you describe it. Yeah, okay, you're the one good. who like actually uses this at work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, so who, who uses this system? Obviously, businesses. I, I named a bunch. Small organizations like a charity, a church, a Christian podcast about tabletop role-playing games and collaborative storytelling, you name it. <laughs> Families and households, I think especially households with teenagers, benefit greatly from this. I don't have teens yet, thank goodness. I'm dreading the day it happens. And You're also about 10 years out from that, I want to say. Eh, 
depends on how you define it. I'm looking forward to it with anticipation and dread all at once. But, you know, when you have multiple family members and a hierarchy, but you can delegate responsibility and part of it is teaching responsibility and, and that sort of thing, I think this works especially well because there's the, these are our goals this quarter and these are what, you know, we need you to do this quarter, but, and then here's how we're going to measure it, but how you accomplish those things is left up to you. You know, we'll be happy to help. Obviously, you you know, there are the rules of the household, but it gives a certain amount of independence. So I, I think a structure like that works pretty well. And you don't have to have like the full on software solution that tracks objectives and key results progress. You can just put it up on a, a board somewhere, but structuring it as these are what we're trying to do to accomplish certain goals. I think that works out nicely without a giant to-do list. You know, whereas my kids who are early elementary school at best, I need a little to-do list because they have to keep it super simple and they're not at the point where they can take that kind of initiative yet as much as they try. Uh, individuals, they can use this at least to frame objectives and establish goals, but the collaborative nature is probably going to be lost without a team of people to work towards some goal together. But, you know, I would certainly say if you're having trouble with like New Year's resolutions or whatever, write out what are my objectives for the next three months? How am I measuring whether I'm meeting those objectives? And then look at that and move from there. It's a good system. Now, as to why we're using the system, well, I mean, it's solid and proven. It's relatively easy and, uh, the tools that we're using, we're using a site called Week Done. I like the tool set that that provides. Week Done, by the way, is very expensive for anything more than a team of three people. Team of three is free. After that, it gets surprisingly expensive quickly because it is all designed for businesses. Fortunately, there's only three of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, just squeaked in. Yeah. However, there are Google Sheets and Excel documents that do this stuff very nicely. And yeah, you could actually use just a selection of Google Docs in a shared folder, probably. Uh, yeah, exactly. So for a small team of like four to five, that works great. There are tools out there for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does encourage teamwork because anyone contrib can contribute to any objective or any key result. And often one person's objective is by definition a key result for another objective. And then – you know, we have had, since we started the podcast, a big list of things we want to do someday. Well, this is a way to ensure that someday actually arrives because we and are- And doesn't take six years like doing a podcast on music did, for instance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We keep talking about our goals. It's nice to actually put them forward and be accountable to each other for what we're doing to accomplish those goals. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that's nice about it that I've noticed is it's it removes any ambiguity about what it is that we're actually doing. You know, it's like it's one thing to say, hey, we want to do a series on the Ten Commandments, but without some kind of tracking, we'll have a year lapse between what was it? Commandments five and six or four and five or something like that. Something four like that. Five. Yeah. Four yeah, and five. And it, it wasn't intentional on our part. We just got distracted with other stuff. And it's like, uh, we've got this dangling series that we should wrap up. We're looking yeah. to do that by the end of this year, by the way. That's one of the things we've talked about. Yeah. And so, you know, just like, hey, we want to do stuff on these particular things or we want to get X number of new guest hosts that we've never talked to before or see if we can get ourselves onto Y number of other podcasts that we haven't appeared on before, then at least we all know that that's something that we're looking at. And, you know, even if it's not like the super intense thing, it's like, oh, yeah, we were we were doing that. Maybe we should see if we can figure out something to facilitate it. It's really good for my ADHD brain because I can see, oh, look, this is a thing that we're doing and here's how we're going to get there. Yeah. So instead of a to do list, which is frequently when I try to make a to do lo to to do loosed to do list, a to do list, it ends up being a bunch of disorganized, somewhat related tasks, but like yeah. they no sort of order to it. This puts things in like this will do this, which will do this. And it's the feedback for me that says the thing I did moved me towards this goal by such and such percentage. Mm -hmm. That's what works for me. Yeah. I also especially like the way that week done looks. Yeah. Like, I just like the user interface. It just And there's a lot to be said for that, good. honestly. It's better yeah. than a big old spreadsheet. You yeah. Know? It does look nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about our first quarter objectives. We're not going to do this for every quarter. Uh, I may do like a, a Patreon blog post for this just to kind of be accountable to people who are supporting us on Patreon. 
I might do it on our actual blog. I don't know. We'll see exactly where that should go later. But because we're just implementing this and because it's a, a good system that I thought our listeners ought to know about, potentially to organize themselves. or the, Nothing helps know. illustrate like some examples. Right, exactly. And because there, it is relevant to what we're going to be doing through the course of the year and things you're going to be hearing, I wanted to go ahead and record this, you know, for all those reasons. So who wants to start with their own goals or should we start with the goals for us as a, as a team? Let's, let's save those for the end. Okay. So for me, I've got some relatively lightweight stuff this quarter and I've got some other stuff that may be getting added to it that I need to talk with my co-hosts about once we finish recording here because I thought of it during this session, but um, <laughs> we all need to do this one. We need to get through the learning curriculum on week done. It's got some documentation that we need to go through. We need to do some stream cleanup, uh, especially with the actual play starting and some various and sundry other stuff that I'm planning to be doing eventually. Doing an additional Wednesday stream on top of the Friday stream just isn't really working, and it's not getting that many eyeballs. Um, I know some of you have tuned in and enjoyed it. I probably will continue to touch that Pathfinder Kingmaker save at least occasionally when it's my turn to stream on Friday, but doing that many weeknights of stuff a week between that and recording this podcast and writing a blog post and so on and so forth, the food pantry board is just getting to be a little bit too much for me to keep all the irons in the fire hot. So I'm letting the Wednesday stream go. Sorry, folks, if you were enjoying it, but there weren't too many of you. So yeah, well, and that's the thing. One of the things that this has done is made us reevaluate, you know, what are we working on and is it creating content that people are actually interested in? Because our Twitch stream has never gotten more than probably eight viewers at once. Yeah. I think I got 12 over Halloween. Okay. Yeah. 12 is the best we've ever had. And we often have streams where nobody watches. Yeah. Or literally the only people watching are each other supporting each other. So yeah. right. we're going to continue to do the Friday one because that was something that we promised to our Patreon backers. And that also allows us to do some of the collaborative stuff that we've done before, which tends to be some of our best viewed content. Yeah, it's much more fun to watch all three of us screw up in Ultimate Chicken Horse or play Armello together or, you know, finally teach Peter the joys of Minecraft or whatever. Or even just two of us collaborate on linked character backstories. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jenny yeah. and I created um, a pair of tiefling celestial warlocks for a collaboration thing that never happened. And that was about a month before we really started streaming, I want to say. And we were like, oh, man, I'd this would have been the perfect thing to stream. Was that it? was more than a month. We've had those characters sitting around for like oh, yeah. ages. I want to play yeah, them. Yeah, it was, it was before Alan and Ashley went to Scotland, at least. Yeah. I know that much. But anyways, yeah, yeah the, the Gallister twins, like that collaborative creation process would have been something really cool to stream. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to be uh, streaming like Eberron prep and things like that. Yeah, which which makes me sad because I'm not going to be able to watch those streams. Oh, you can watch me draw a map. Uh, okay, that's mostly what you're going to be doing because well, it's visual and interesting, and I can yeah. talk about it while I do it. All right, one that I've already started on and is largely done is I kind of needed to sit down and consult with Grant a little bit about some hardware improvements to his PC. Yeah. Because Grant is using a PC that I built for him back close to the start of the podcast. I want to say 2014-ish or something. Yeah, something like. And while that's not so old that it needs to be just sunsetted outright, it's definitely time for some component upgrades. He needs more RAM. He possibly needs, you know, some various other things. So that's one yep. of the things that um, some Patreon funds are going towards. Um just so that while he's working on editing tasks and stuff, he has a piece of hardware that he isn't fighting against. We dug into some of that, used some software to figure out specific part numbers that we needed and that sort of thing. Yes, and I need to add to my to-do list, follow up on that and actually order parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, Grant, I am out of stuff. What have you got? So my primary objective for this quarter is to run and produce an excellent D&D game for our gaming group. Now, that's assuming that, you know, I have the whole quarter to, to do this. That's 11 game sessions, right? So I need to be prepared and have everything ready for 11 game sessions. Note that we're tracking the key result here, right? 11 sessions worth of content. 
Now, it is entirely possible that there will not actually be 11 sessions. It's entirely possible that everybody will be sick or something like that. But that's the goal. And we're going to be a little more flexible with the number of people who actually show up to sessions because we've got a bunch of players and we need to make sure that the game does actually happen. Yeah, and life ferociously savaged us over the summer. So mm -hmm. that was bad. Yeah, it <laughs> was and probably helped kill the colony game. So. I think it killed it outright, but that's another discussion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other th key result for that is creating notes after each session to recap for the players and to take note of any discussion topics for saving the game episodes. This is a brand new objective. I was literally adding it in the notes for the episode we're recording. I haven't even gotten it into week done yet. There are probably other key results that need to go into that, producing collateral, stream a few times, things like that. But th that's one big objective. I have another objective that I have not fully fleshed out because, again, it was one that I just thought of. Make my social media presence more engaging. And that's just a, a personal thing where a lot of what I do is uh, retweet stuff, and that's kind of boring. It's not very, a very interesting feed. A lot of what I do retweet is my personal interests. You know, I need to actually – we're all content producers. As one of the people who produces content, I need to produce content there as well. And then most of the other stuff I'm working on actually ties into – team objectives. So I'm going to save that for when we talk about those. Mm -hmm. Jenny? Well, my main objective is really quite tied to the team objective, but uh, a big one for me is improving our tagging systems and uh, making my database brain happy because um, yeah. that's what I do. And this is for the blog and for our YouTube channel. Yeah. So it's basically just making our blog a lot more findable by Google and having episodes be a lot more searchable and appeasing to YouTube's, uh, the very fickle YouTube algorithm. So yeah. if, for instance, on our main website, we, we mentioned Bono earlier, right? That's probably not going to be in the show notes publicly available. It's only available in audio format. Nobody's going to know we talked about Bono unless I put it in the tags. Basically, if we don't tag things properly, we're not going to show up in any kind of search results. Um, so we we do have to properly tag our content. And uh, I think I can do that. So I'm going to try to do it. Um, and I'm going to try to do it in a way that makes WordPress happy and makes me happy uh, and makes Peter and Grant happy, but I don't know if... I, I, I'm the person who's studying databases. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so, organizing with tags and with, you know, yeah. re references. This is yeah. what you do, which this is, is why it's great for you. Yeah, this is this is my job. And now that I'm learning how to do it in various different cataloging systems and, and all that sorts of nonsense, I can probably do it better with WordPress than I would have been able to before. WordPress is not... It's it's not rocket surgery. It's just WordPress. Yeah. yeah. And um, one other thing, just for the record, if you had seen what the receiving room at that Barnes & Noble I worked at looked like before I started as the receiving manager and what it looked like on my last day on the job, mm -hmm. you would never have any doubt that I like things to be organized ever again for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Though I, I will also say the difference between the way my library looks and the way that I've organized my library, and the way my desk at my library looks, very different. <laughs> if I yeah. can alphabetize something and add metadata to it, that's great. But if I can't... <laughs> it is very difficult to add metadata to a desk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, uh, my desks at home and work are a little cluttered. Um, at least I've gotten better at getting like the clutter into little bins and stuff that are categorized by what kind of thing it is, but... yeah. When a large part of your job is different hardware adapters, it's there's no good way of making that look pretty. <laughs> no, yeah. there isn't. Yeah. So basically I'm I'm just trying to reduce blog clutter and YouTube tag clutter and just standardize everything, synchronize everything that I possibly can, and then add on to what we've already got in terms of a tagging system. And uh yeah, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is is largely a, a team thing. I think largely between me and Grant. I don't know. I mean, Peter, if you want to contribute, please do. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's generating the content. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. So what we're doing there is – and this is a useful example of how objectives are, are linked. Mm -hmm. We have as a team objective to improve 
our YouTube channel. Because we've had a YouTube channel for a long time, and uh, we're not doing a good job of using it. Yeah, for a long time, the only thing that was on there was episode 50, I believe. Yeah, and then I got episode 25 up there with Jack Birkenstock, because I needed to have that in YouTube form for people to kind of be able to see. And then we've kind of tried occasionally to use it, and yeah. So we have as a team objective improved the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But here's our key results for this. I'll just read them off, okay? Publish six new episodes to YouTube. As of the time we're recording this, I've gotten episode 144 published on our YouTube channel. Hooray. Great. This episode should be available on YouTube. I can't promise it's going to drop same day as our actual audio podcast in our feed, but it's going to get out there and we'll work on getting a schedule that may be a second quarter objective is refining the schedule and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then we also have publish a, the backlog of Twitch exports to YouTube and publish all new Twitch VODs to YouTube. We have actually been exporting all of our Twitch streams to YouTube, but because they require editing to trim off like the, the beginning and end and that sort of thing, you know, very basic edits, we have not committed the time to do it. We've had some technical issues that have prevented us from doing that. And so that has not been done yet. So that is now one of the key results is saying, you know, are all of the Twitch VODs on YouTube? Now, to be perfectly honest, publish the backlog. That's not a great key objective. That's not a very measurable one. And I need to go back and refine that and publish all new Twitch VODs to YouTube. Slightly more measurable because I could work out how many there are, but still a little not great. And then the last one that I added is add appropriate channel art to our YouTube channel. That's really just a task. So I need to change that to a task for myself and get rid of that. So you can see how it's easy to fall into the trap of adding key results that are really tasks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here's the thing. Jenny has, as one of her tasks, export all Twitch streams to YouTube. Or that's one of her objectives. Well, the thing is, that's actually a key result for our improve the YouTube channel objective. So she's got as an objective, export all that stuff, and she's got some key results that are part of that. But then that whole objective becomes a key result for the objective that we have as a whole team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of flows upward and contributes to our progress on that. And, you know, just so you know, our Improve the Saving the Game YouTube channel objective is at 7%, which doesn't Yay. sound like a lot, but as we're just getting started with this whole process, that's fine. Yeah. And that's one thing I do want to talk about real quick as we kind of wrap this up. It takes a while to get used to any new system of organizing things. And OKRs in particular have a little bit of a learning curve because they are not a task list. It takes a while to figure out how to set good objectives and good key results that actually measure what you want to measure. The whole idea is that if your key results are all at 100%, if they're all complete, well, then you should have, by definition, met your objective if you judged the key results correctly and were measuring the right things. So improve our YouTube channel. Well, you know, if we get our new episodes up there and we have all of our con a bunch of new content up there. That seems like a good improvement. Mm -hmm. But we also have another objective, increase our monthly listenership by at least 25%. I ho am hoping that the key results I've established for that help us meet that objective, but I'm not sure. Here, here are the key results for increase our monthly listenership by 25%. And again, this is, this is aspirational, right? A 25% increase in listenership in three months, that's a big goal, but we're pushing for it. So what I've got is bring on two new guests well-known in their relevant field, reach out to three other podcasts about appearing as a guest so that we are on other shows talking about saving the game, contact 10 other Christian content creators, news sites, etc. to let them know we exist. I don't know that I want to write a press release and say, hey, look, here we are. But, you know, some way of just letting people know, hey, we're here. We have content that you may be interested in. If nothing else, I don't talk about this much, but all of our episodes are licensed as Creative Commons attribution share-like licenses. As long as people say, hey, this came from Saving the Game, they can use our shows. Mm -hmm. We're fine yeah. with that. And there's also nothing to say that we can't perhaps get a little more involved with groups like Christ in Pop Culture or Kyle Rudge's... Geekdom House. Yeah, Geekdom House. Thank you. I was blanking for a second there. It's like... I know it's got house in the name. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, there are a bunch of organizations. I mean, we do almost nothing with the Christian Gamers Guild, and they are literally our wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. 
these are things we need to reach out to, right? Right. And we need to get involved with that. And then one of our other key results is commit to attending two different conventions as saving the game during 2019. Now, that's mm-hmm. not attend two conventions. That's commit to attending because our goal is for this quarter, and this is really not as much increasing our listenership this quarter. So this is perhaps not the right place for this key result, may need to change it. But we're saying these are the cons we want to try and go to. There's an unwritten part of this outside of Fear the Con if we go to Fear the Con this year, which for various reasons might or might not happen depending on finances and some other issues. You know, nothing against Fear the Con. It's just- We love you know, Fear the Con. It's just life has not loved us lately. Yeah. So Exactly. And there are, you know, there are cons that I've had on my wish list for years and I just haven't gotten around to it. Again, save against the, fear. But save against fear. Con Carolinas. I mean, there's there's just stuff near me all the time that I you know. Um Mid South Con, I, I think that's the name of it. The one in Tennessee that Derek White goes to every year. That seems like a good con. I mean, Tennessee's not the closest, but it's not that far away. I can make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not like Los Angeles or something. Yeah, exactly. We need to pick some cons and commit to attending them. And Great. Yeah. I'm even hoping to maybe get together a panel at a bigger convention, hopefully, just so yeah. that it's it's like it's, it's all well and good to walk around with a Saving the Game t-shirt and have my business cards ready to talk about it all the time. But to actually have an audience... That is there to listen to me talk about podcasting or board gaming or or whatever and have me talk about it as a representative of saving the game. That's a lot bigger than just walking around with a T-shirt. Exactly. So, yeah, that's that's interesting, too, because a few years ago at the one Fear the Con that Grant and I both made it to. Yeah. We sat in on, I think, the last one of these that they did. They they uh, used to do like a panel for bloggers and podcasters and that sort of thing. And Grant and I realized that even with our limited amount of time, we were kind of the canny old veterans and we had a lot to share. Mm-hmm. So just take, you know, however much we knew back then and double it. <laughs> yeah. And again, there there's a couple different things here because increasing listenership might not happen just by reaching out to people. There may be other things we need to do, but I think it will help. And so I'm going to say, let's let's start with this. And then at the end of the quarter, we're going to sit down and we're going to review it. That's the last piece of the whole OKR system. Every quarter you sit down and say, did we meet all of our key results? If not, why? What happened? We figure it out. And then we look and say, did we meet our objectives? It's entirely possible all of the key results for a sales team were met, but the sales goal, the objective wasn't met because the key results weren't set correctly. They didn't reflect what was actually going on in the market. And so the sales team, you know, they hit their numbers, but the people setting the sales team goals didn't set the right numbers to meet. We might get two guests on and be on three different podcasts and reach out to a bunch of people, but maybe those were the wrong shows and the wrong guests and the wrong Christian content creators and our listenership numbers didn't budge. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. You know, there's a process of revisiting it. Certainly, we're not going to say our YouTube channel is perfect once we start getting content on there. That's the first step. But there are things we need to do to promote it and make it a regular thing and make it a source from which people can consume content. We need to be on YouTube because YouTube is the biggest podcasting platform out there. It just boggles my mind still. Well, I mean, it's real easy to put stuff up there. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's the best platform for it. It's very it's free. it's the easiest. It's the freest. <laughs> and, and anybody who's got a copy of Windows Movie Maker can make a podcast now. Mm-hmm. And that's free. Yeah. Anybody can get their phone out, record a video of themselves talking, and put it up on YouTube. So and yeah, so many people do. Oh, they mm-hmm. do. And you know what? It works fine. Yeah. It doesn't take a whole lot to get it up there. So it is the biggest platform for it. We need to be on there. We have not been. And is that on me? Yeah, but it's there's been no accountability and I haven't made it a priority. Now we are. So that's why we're doing this whole OKR thing is to be able to be accountable to ourselves and to each other, which is important in any sort of team environment, whether it is a company or a family. I know it's kind of weird to talk about a family as a team, but it is a team among other things. You all have to work together or it's going to be a miserable time in the household. Mm -hmm. That's why we're doing this. And I hope that as we've broken this down for what we're doing and how OKRs work, you're maybe taking notes and thinking, oh yeah, this could work for me. 
I'm not necessarily saying you have to go out and buy John Doerr's Major What Matters book. It's a good book. You can book. borrow it from my library. Yes, you should. It came in last week. I'm very happy about it. Excellent. Get it from the library. It's probably out there. Oh, yeah. Even if you don't do that, you can do some research on objectives and key results. There are plenty of YouTube videos explaining the process. Many of them are produced by companies that want to sell you on OKR tracking solutions, but that's okay because they're still explaining how the whole system works. It's great. And hopefully this podcast has helped that. If you're looking to, to find ways to organize things for yourself or your team or your company or, again, like your church, your, your charity, give it a shot. I don't know that it works great for like your weekly gaming group or whatever, but Unless you know. you've got a much more ambitious gaming group than ours. <laughs> yeah, but for anything with, with actual goals and a hope of accomplishing anything, haha, digs on gaming groups. Yeah, I think <laughs> oh, it works oh, just Oh, guys, fine. guys. What? <laughs> we should implement this inside the game. <laughs> oh my gosh, because it's a business. <laughs> I love that idea. I think my character would hate it so much, but I want to play my character hating it, would, it so It much. would so be something Nasir would suggest. <laughs> I mean, oh we do already gosh. have an office manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not yeah. sure Chrissy has fully bought in, but her character is going to be the office <laughs> Considering manager. Considering how much time she spent doing that in real life, I can't say I blame her. Oh, yeah. 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 J just to be clear for those listening at home, the two founding members of the uh, private investigation company are Peter's character, Nasir, and Jenny's character, Ganelon. Ganelon, probably the pr really the primary business owner. He's the guy whose name's on all the certificates and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nasir is kind of like... Hey, you know businessy stuff, and you have venture capital. Why don't you start this with me? Yeah, G Ganelon's <laughs> like the fifty-one percent shareholder. <laughs> yeah, and he made sure to get that one percent. <laughs> exactly. How adventurous was this venture capital? I have to ask. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so, it was most of it was made working as a high-priced security consultant. So, yeah, you yeah. tell me, House Deneath oh. doesn't exactly give you boring jobs. I don't think. Yeah, yeah uh, there's that. So yeah, that's um, that's going to be a lot of fun because I, d mm -hmm. I do think we are going to try and track, you know, living expenses and at least the very basics of is the business getting income or not. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. And that is largely up to me because I'm going to be the one saying, yeah, this is these are the people walking through your door in this time frame. So we'll, we'll play around with it. We'll see how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would be a lot of fun to at least have like a list of goals tacked up on a bulletin board in the office somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. Relocate to upper ward name. <laughs> it has been three days since your last possession. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it has been six days since your last street fight. <laughs> Reset that one. Zero yeah. days since this last nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Office gags are always good, right? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. If we're planning the game instead of talking about the topic, I think we're done. One last note on this. In order to accomplish a lot of these goals and, and set aside time for them, we've actually hired one of our listeners as a editor for the show. It's not every episode, and uh, he's been very generous. He's kind of getting started with this, and he's doing it as a favor for us, so his rates are, are pretty reasonable. We still can't afford to do it every episode. Patreon money isn't there for that, and that's sort of to be expected given kind of where we are right now. Yep. Uh, frankly, you guys have been incredibly generous and we can't thank our Patreon backers enough. <laughs> it's just that editing is kind of an expensive thing to do. Yeah, so. exactly. It really is. It's very time consuming. It certainly is. Just to be clear about this, editing is expensive and it should be. <laughs> yes. yes. The, yes. <laughs> the amount of effort and skill that's necessary to do good audio editing is extremely non-trivial. So right. the fact that Justin is charging us the rates that he is speaks volumes for his generosity and character. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, he he reached out, gave us a, a good number on it, and in conjunction with these other things, we're like, yeah, let's give it a try. So if you listen to episode 144, you may have noticed it sounded a little different in some ways. That's why. He's edited that one, and he's going to edit the next one. You know, we'll be alternating for a while. We'll see how it goes. If we get to the point where we can get him to do all of our episodes, great. Mm -hmm. That's more time to create content and, and do other things. Yeah. But even this is a big load off my shoulders and it's really valuable. We really appreciate the work Justin's put into this. It will free us up to accomplish these goals in a lot of good ways. I think that's about it. I had to throw my cat outside and she's yelling, I gotta go. <laughs> okay. I actually, once we once we wrap up, I have a couple of objectives that I thought of while we were 
recording this that I'd like to run past you guys. But let's hey, go that's ahead fine. and wrap it. I mean, that's that's the nature of the system, right? It is yep. flexible. You can add stuff to it. All right. Well, let's do wrap this up. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful for you. Next week, we're going to be doing mental health. So keep that in mind. Oh, that was a terrible pun. I'm sorry. Okay, actually, oh, that no, was next, a great pun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night. Take it easy. We'll catch you next time. Yep. See ya. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> this has been a production of Saving the Game. All episodes are produced and published under a Creative Commons 4.0 attribution, share alike license. Our logo is by Ruben Smith Zimple of 3d6design.com. Our music is The Promised Place Beyond the Clouds by James Opie. You can find more of his music at nihalore.com. To hear our past episodes, to find syndication and license details, to connect with our fantastic listener community, or to contact us or support our show through Patreon, visit our website at stgcast.org or savingthegamepodcast.org. God bless, do good, and happy gaming.